Part 5. Hell and High Water 37. Jackie Jackie's mouth is dry and tastes like she's been sucking on mud, which isn't something she's ever wanted to do, but she's desperate at this point. She's also the only one left to drive. Kelton's parents won't let him get a license, and Alyssa didn't have time or a car, so she didn't see the point. They all bicker at one another until Garrett tells everyone to shut up, which they do. Since their route is off the main road, traveling will be difficult to navigate. They know there won't be any cliffs to dodge, but the trees and boulders make driving very slow. Jackie's not sure they are going the right way, but their hopes are brought up when they spot a firefighting plane above headed to the reservoir. As she drives, Jackie can feel all of her body aches and pains. They are made worse with the bumps along the way. She narrowly misses hitting a tree. Her vision is getting blurry, and her reflexes are slowing. 38. Henry Henry's wrists are zip-tied together, although he's not sure why. It's not like he's going anywhere. He briefly thinks about lifting up the door handle and jumping out of the car, but that's not a plan that will help him. For now, he's stuck in this car, ready for his next opportunity. 39. Kelton Kelton worries about his navigation responsibilities. What if he directs Jackie wrong and they don't make it to the San Gabriel Reservoir? What if they do make it and it's dry? 40. Garrett Garrett wonders if his parents are still alive. He questions whether you're thirsty when you're dead. In addition to his dry throat, he anguishes over his dry eyes. They hurt whether they're open or closed. He zones out while staring out of the windshield. 41. Alyssa Alyssa worries about whether or not there'll be water at the reservoir. In an effort to distract herself, she starts thinking of all the homework she didn't finish. These thoughts just lead back to water. Henry interrupts her thoughts by telling her she would have liked him if they would have met in the real world, that he's not the awful person she assumes. Alyssa reminds him that she did past tense, like him. He vows to make her like him again. She lacks the energy to care. Jackie suddenly stops the car. The smell of smoke is stronger. They hear music. 42. Kelton. Kelton wants to believe the music will lead to something good, but his paranoid side, thanks dad, is worried. He volunteers to check out the situation. His journey is short but tough. He crests the ridge and hears Led Zeppelin. There's an old, rusty, bug-out camper with two guys sitting in lawn chairs and ominous-looking weapons within reach. The men are roasting rabbits over an open fire. As Kelton is hiding, taking in the scene, he sees one of the men drink from a bottle of water. He controls his craving and realizes something is wrong. A woman's purse is on the ground, contents strewed, no sign of the owner. Kelton knows there are two kinds of preppers, those who want to protect their loved ones from the chaos and those who want to bring the chaos. Kelton knows they need to fear these men. Alyssa pops up behind Kelton and sees the water. Kelton pulls her away before they're discovered. They return to the truck and Alyssa tells everyone about the water. Kelton begs them all to trust him. Jackie argues they need to get the water. Debate ensues. Garrett passes out. After the excitement quiets, they realize the truck is off. The keys are gone, and so is Henry. 43. Henry. Henry shows up at the encampment. The men pose threateningly, and Henry begins negotiating. 44. Alyssa. Jackie tries to hotwire the truck while Kelton looks for Henry. Alyssa refuses to leave Garrett. Alyssa wishes Jackie would have just killed Henry when she had the chance. The two men stroll out of the woods. They are frightening, 30-ish, with tattoos and the looks of hard living, shaved heads and scars, wearing their violent intentions. The men tell them that Henry sold them the truck for a drink of water before he ran away. The men threaten them with a handgun. Alyssa tries to negotiate, and Jackie lunges for the gun. Its owner is strong and quick. The other man taunts Alyssa and presses up against her, suggesting what she can offer him in exchange for water. Disgusted, she tries to knee him in the groin, but he grabs her before she can follow through. 
Garrett bolts out of the car and bites the man savagely. The skinhead yells in pain and points the gun at Garrett. He fires. 45. Jackie. Jackie is pinned tight, but then she sees Garrett attack and the skinhead raise the gun. She screams, which throws her captor off balance. The shot goes wild. There's blood everywhere. Garrett is covered in it, but it's not his own. It's the blood of Jackie's captor, shot in the forehead, dead on the ground. There stands Kelton with a smoking gun. Before the skinhead can express his shock, Kelton shoots him too. Alyssa is sprayed with the blood from the exit wound and is in absolute hysterics. She runs for Garrett and is flooded with relief when she sees he's okay. Jackie doesn't love having to be rescued by a boy, but admits that with his previous weapons training, it makes him the right person for the job. Kelton calmly orders Jackie to collect the keys and guns, and after that, they'll go to the dead men's camp to get their water. Jackie marvels over this changed Kelton. 46. Alyssa Alyssa wants to freak out over all that has happened, but she holds it together for Garrett, who tells her he can't move. She worries. He just spent his last ounce of energy. 47. Kelton Kelton is processing the murders he just committed. He defeated the enemy. He did what he had to do. They arrive at the camp to find it ablaze. The fire had just reached the cooler. It's too hot to approach. Alyssa runs into the camper, which the fire has not yet reached. Maybe there's more water inside? 48. Alyssa Inside the camper, Alyssa hears a woman calling out. She assumes the woman wants the two dead men. The old lady is bedridden and claims all of the water is in the cooler. Alyssa realizes the woman is the dead men's mother. The woman screams at Alyssa to leave. She sees a picture of the two men as little boys. Nope, she can't think about that. As Alyssa insists the woman come with her, she spots a cup of water on the window ledge. They both lunge for it. A fight ensues. Is Alyssa really going to take water away from a dying old woman? Yes. To save her brother? Yes. Yes, she is. Alyssa slaps her. Some of the water spills, but what's left might be enough to keep Garrett alive. Alyssa leaves the old woman behind, destined to burn to death. 49. Jackie. Jackie's hands are burning, trying to get into the cooler. Kelton tries to move it with a stick. The side splits. Water spills. It steams. The water is gone. The fire spreads. She sees Alyssa with a cup of water. She knows who it's for and makes no move to take it. Humanity found. 50. Alyssa. Is Garrett dead? He looks dead. Alyssa drips a little water into his mouth. Nothing. A little more. He coughs, complains, then swallows. She pours it all in. He asks for more. She literally laughs out loud. Jackie and Kelton return, fire blazing behind them. Alyssa asks after the old woman. What old woman? They head to the truck. 51. Kelton. Jackie can't drive the truck because of her blistered hands. Kelton's not much of a driver, but there's no choice. Trees scrape against the truck. They slam into rocks. Jackie is in agony trying to brace herself with her hands. Garrett looks bad, but better. Kelton is tired. His lungs hurt from the smoke. He takes a ridge too quickly. He breaks, but they skid. It's a 30-degree downward grade. The brakes are useless. The road gets steeper. Obstacles increase. Gravity takes over. The crash comes. Airbags deploy. Garrett tells Kelton he sucks at driving. They get out, smell gas, and notice they're on a road. They're on an actual road. They've got a mile of walking ahead of them. Kelton's adrenaline spikes. They're so close. They start walking.